Hey guys, David here, founder of SuperThread and welcome to my devlog. So in this devlog, I want to talk about caching and more specifically on how you can use caching to increase the access speed of your data for your backend app. So how you can basically put caching in front of a database which may be writing data to a hard drive, by putting the caching in front in various different ways, you can actually increase the speed at which your app responds. And I'm really excited to be doing this video because at SuperThread, I think a lot about caching and how we can increase the speed of the database. We don't only want the front end to be fast, but we want our API that we're gonna be giving out to our developers to be also fast. So we really are maniacal about every millisecond and therefore the caching plays a really, really important part of how things play out in the back end. But before I begin, check out my new t-shirt. I've got this kind of goofy character chasing the SuperThread hummingbird. If you guys want to win one of these t-shirts, head to www.superthread.com and sign up for early access. We are looking for early access subscribers, so you guys can test out our early product and give us some feedback, we'd really appreciate it. Anyway, without further ado, let's go through different types of database caching. So to begin with, the, the way caching is typically done is by using a side cache approach. And the way that normally works is that you'd have your backend app written in something like Java or Golang or PHP. And that thing would try and access data from the database here. But, that, but the, the way the flow would normally work is that you'd kind of have a cache in front of the actual database. So the app would go and try and read the record from the cache and if the record doesn't exist then it goes basically and reads the record from the database and then it hydrates the cache itself so everything is done basically by the app itself so you have to program this logic yourself this is a pretty solid approach and basically i think is the most common approach and a lot of people use it and it's a really nice approach the issue is uh, when you have records inside of cache you know, how long do you keep them in there? You know, how often do you have to kind of go to the database and rehydrate the cache? These are some of the things you have to think about. And it may be a little bit easier with kind of straight records where you kind of just get kind of a user object. Uh, but when it comes to queries, you know, like, um, let's say you update a record which affects a query, do you then cache the query in here and so on and so forth. So you can get really complicated really fast, but let's say to implement a really simple version is not that difficult. The next approach is a read-through cache. So read-through cache is a feature of, offered by some databases. So you kind of, uh, this is the way it kind of works. So this is your app, let's say a PHP or like Golang app, and then it kind of tries to read the, the record from cache. And if the record doesn't exist, the cache itself, so if this is part of the DB now, you see, so this is no longer being done by the app. So the caching kind of layer of your DB then goes and reads the record from the database and then hydrates the cache and then re returns the cached record. So then basically next time somebody comes, uh, they'll have the cached record here in, inside of the cache automatically. The same thing goes for write through cache. Once again, uh, you have your app and it tries to write the record and then the cache layer of the actual database. So this is part of your database application. This isn't done by your app, once again. Basically it says, let's write this to the database, which is basically writes it on a hard drive somewhere. And then basically let's get this record from the database and hydrate the actual cache part of the database. So once again, this is all done by the database. So you write the record, then the, the, the caching layer kind of says, I don't have this record and it says, okay, I'm going to write this record to the database and then I'm going to pull, pull the actual written record, the record I just wrote, back into cache and then the actual record is re returned to the app from the cache. The next scenario is the write around cache. Okay, so this is the way it works. Rather than going through the caching layer, you kind of go around the caching layer. Okay, so the caching layer basically is not your app. It may be part of the database. For example, say, um, you know, Postgres can have this caching layer. So what you then do is you, the app, or your app goes and writes the record to the database straight away. And then the database itself then populates this caching layer. And then when you actually go and get the, the actual record, uh, you get it from the caching layer of the database. But you don't actually write through cache, you write around cache, okay? And the 
last scenario is right behind cash. So this is really the, the dream, you know, like so. But the problem is like, if this kind of part here breaks, then you have problems because, or you may write something to the caching layer of the database. And then the caching layer returns this cache record and says, oh, it's written. And then it goes behind the scenes and writes it, writes it to the database and then kind of writes it back uh, to, to, to the cache, rehydrates it back, back to the cache. Now, the problem here is that what happens if you write to the cache and then the cache flakes and, and, then, the, and then the cache says, oh, I've written the record. And then just after it says, I've written the record, it flakes out then it doesn't get written to the database. So basically then you have kind of consistency issues. So in such cases, basically what you have to do is have many kind of um, nodes of the actual cache replicated. So in case one flakes out, basically you have more reliability because the other one is going to do the same thing. So this is kind of the ultimate dream. And then also in such scenarios, uh, you may have actually the caching part. So the in-memory part, do your queries too, which would be really cool. So it kind of, it's kind of a replica of what's on the hard drive and that's the ultimate but then uh, once again as i said what happens if this, there's this break between the actual memory and the actual hard drive then you kind of have these inconsistencies and it can cause kind of a nightmare so which one do you kind of choose it all depends on what you kind of are happy with do you want uh, do you want eventual consistency or do you want immediate consistency is writing speed important to you is reading speed important to you how important is reliability are you talking about the bank here i mean must the record go through must the record be absolutely consistent then then you kind of have to make sure that the record gets written inside of the database but then you see if the caching part of the database for example let's say uh you kind of you, you do a write through here for example let's say you're a bank and you do a write through. So you have this caching part basically of the database, which then receives the record and then writes it to the database. Normally what happens is that this caching part sits on a different machine. So you have this kind of extra network hop to actually uh, uh, deal with. And then especially if you have replicas on, on the actual database side, on the hard drive side, and if you want absolute consistency, i.e. the record is written only if it's written to all these nodes of the actual database, then it may take something like half a second or a second. If you're dealing with something like um, uh, right behind cache, it may take only like a few milliseconds because you know the cache is answering immediately because the number of CPU cycles that it's needed to actually deal with RAM is very, very few compared to having to deal with the actual uh, hard drive and especially having to deal with an extra network hop. So it really depends what you need. So if you're a bank, you probably need something like this. If you are dealing with something that isn't that important, you know, like, let's say, I don't know, like a, a comment on a gaming forum, you may be happy with this. So it all depends on your needs. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I hope you've learned something about cash. Are there different methods that you guys use? I'd love to hear from you. So leave a comment down below. Our database speed is very, very important. And at SuperThread, we are taking it super seriously. And this is something that we spend a lot of time dealing with. Anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed the video once again, and I'll see you in our next video.